and welcome to the New Ebenezer Baptist Church Sunday School Ministry. Today is Sunday, July the 10th of 2022, and our church is located at 6300 Hartford Avenue here in Detroit, Michigan. Zip code is 4210, where Pastor Wallace R. Mills Jr. is our pastor. You can join us each Sunday morning at 9.15 for our Sunday school lesson, and then again at 10 a.m. for our morning worship. Today's lesson is coming out our summer quarter, Unit 2, The Word, The Agent of Creation. The Word Heals. Adult and Youth adopt, adult Topic, Never Too Far Away. Youth Topic is Healing Words. Our Children Topic is Healed. This is our lesson number six in our book. Our devotional reading is Psalms 107, verses 1 through 20. Our printed passage is John 4, 46 through 54. And this morning lesson will be coming from our own Sister Lillian Cunningham. And Sister Cunningham. Thank you, Sister Angela. Good morning. We're in for a great treat. Um, God's word is always a great for us to learn. We ask that you get your uh, Bible study material ready, you have your Sunday school lesson in your pen and paper so that we can take notes and we just thank God for this blessed day. Uh, the subject that you've already heard is The Word Heals. Now I have two subtitles. One that says the word of God heals completely and the word of God heals us spiritually and physically. Amen, amen. And I just remember, we can't go forward until we have a word of prayer. So let us pray. Most holy and everlasting Father, we thank you, Lord, for one more day. We thank you for another opportunity to expound on your word, O oh Lord. We glorify you, we lift you up. We acknowledge your presence right here, right now. We love you, Lord. We ask that you come in and teach this lesson for us, O oh Lord. Give us the words to say, O oh Lord. Lead us and guide us with your blessed Holy Spirit. We thank you for everything. Forgive us, lead and guide us. Make of us what you have us to be. And we ask this blessing in God's son. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I feel better now. Amen. Amen. As the subject is the word healed. The word of God healed. We're talking about God's word here. All 66 books of the true and living God. This is our Bible. This is our guideline. As I said, our subtitles are the word of God heals completely and the word of God heals us spiritually and uh, physically. I want you to know that uh, in this lesson, this the first miracle that Jesus performed was the um, changing of water to wine at the wedding in Canaan. And now this lesson, the second miracle performed in today's lesson would be him healing the nobleman's son that was ill. He was ill, then he was gravely ill, and the next step he was about to die. Okay, I am going, the devotional reading speaks on the Lord's goodness for mankind. Let us read John 4, 4 through 46 to 54 of the lesson. I just realized I had that on. Uh, of the lesson, and we'll go straight into everything. 46 says, so Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea, into Galilee, he went into him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus 
good to him. Speaking to the nobleman, except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down, or my son, my child shall die. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son, live. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he be, uh, began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth and himself believed, and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he came out of Judea into Galilee. Amen. Amen. I'm excited. Already if we go into this lesson, look at another faith-based lesson we have. Here it says, so Jesus came again into Galilee. Now the nobleman had heard that Jesus was coming uh, again unto Galilee and then heard about the miracles and what happened. But this nobleman, we are saying, the commentary says that he was of the noble court, of the royal court. But this nobleman lived 70 miles out of where Jesus was. But he had the faith to believe that Jesus could heal his son and he traveled those 70 miles to get to Jesus. And then when he said, he went to him and he said, please come down and heal my son for he's at the point of death. But then Jesus said to him, you know, and he didn't say this just for the noble, but he said this to the people that were gathered. He said, a lot of you, are, you know, you want to see signs and wonders before you believe. But as you can see, the nobleman didn't ask Jesus to do a sign uh, before he believed. He already believed. He believed in his 70 miles of travel, thank you, Jesus, that Jesus could heal his son. He did not ask for signs and wonders. He believed that if I can just get to Jesus, he going to help me out. And uh, so he didn't ask for that. He said, please just come because my child is about to die. But then look at 50, verse 50. Y'all with me? Because we in John 4, 46 through 54. We're now in verse 50. Jesus said unto him, unto him, Go thy way, thy son live. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Two points. Faith, total faith in Christ, is shown here from the nobleman. Because he believed that Jesus could heal his son. And the Lord told him, say, you go your way for your son living. Because look at this, wow. The man was standing there asking God, Jesus, to come with him. God was already 70 miles away at the man's house. Hallelujah, we're going to shout right now. Healing the man's son. Why is that? Because one guy is powerful and he is omnipresent. What does omnipresent mean? He's everywhere at the same time. That goes to show you that when we're praying, let's say we're praying for Auntie Sally in Mississippi. We in Detroit. We can't get to Mississippi right then and there, mm -hmm. but we can send our prayer. Because right. the effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous, what? Oh, the bell of the month. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We can shout right there. I'm not praying to but I'm going to calm down. And we can also apply Hebrews 11 and one that says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The substance, the substance is your faith. Faith is the substance. That's how I want to say it, of your Christian living. If you have no substance, you have no faith, you cannot serve God. Amen. So you need faith. And look at the man's faith. That was the substance. 
And then the evidence not seen was that while he was trusting in the Lord and asking him to come, God had already healed the son. So the evidence was not, was not seen because the nobleman didn't see it because he was still with Jesus. But God had healed his son. God saw within him the man's total faith. How many of us have total faith mm. in Christ? We said we got faith in God, but do we have total faith in the sovereign God? That's a question you ask yourself, because only you can know where your Jesus meter is. Is your Jesus meter here and then above? Or is your Jesus, Jesus me the ball right here? I trust the Lord so far. Mm -hmm. So you got to have total faith in our Christ, even in the midnight, in the good times, in the mad, that he will make a way. So remember, we don't remember anything else, that faith is the substance of your Christian living. Amen. 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 And then we cannot tell God where to go. Mm. We can't use him like a navigator mm. because he's already there and he will handle it. You just got to trust him and believe. And so Jesus said, told the man, go thy way for your son lived because he saw how the man trusted in Jesus. And this part really got me too when I started shouting. And the man believed mm. the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way again. And the man believed the word of Jesus, and he went his way. He went back home, and uh, he believed that his son was healed. 51 says, and as he was now going down, his servant met him and told him, saying, your son is living. And so, of course, he's going like, what? Well, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And he then he actually said, so when did this happen? And the servant said, yesterday. And the man remembered, it's like, well, yesterday, I was talking to Jesus mm. about healing my son. And he healed my Son, so I'm sure he was shouting and praising the Lord and then inquired of them that he began to amend. And they said to him yesterday, the seventh hour of the fever had left him. So the father knew that it was the same hour as I just said, that his son lived and himself believed. And look at this. Uh, look at how the healing, God's work will heal physically and Spiritually, the son was healed. And then look how the nobleman and his entire household, his family believed in Jesus Christ. You got to believe in Christ. The evidence not seen. Mm. The evidence I'm saying, our faith is the evidence. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you pray, and you ask God for certain things, hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't know, you're hoping that it happens. You're praying that the Lord will bless you, hear your prayer and bless and supply your need and amend what is happening to you. And then when it happens and you see the evidence of your trusting in God, your faith should get a little stronger your praise should be a little louder. Amen. You should be a stronger Christian where you say, okay, sister, I've been through that. And I know for a fact that the Lord will heal. But in order to know this, you got to stay in the word of God. I, I have to keep saying it. Sunday school is important. It's not just for kids. Bible class is important. Meditation time with the Lord is important. A relationship. Check your relationship with the Lord. Do you have a relationship with him? Does he talk to you and you talk to him? We've had some good conversations I have with the Lord and you too should share in this, this great uh, ability, this great feeling of having the Lord speak to you. This is a faith 
based lesson. And I like how uh, the man said it in his whole house believe. There's another question that comes up. Are you the only believer in your house? Mm. Does your family know that you are a true believer and follower of the Lord? Are you a disciple? Does your life shine? Or does it just shine on Sundays when you're with us? But does it shine within your family where they say, Ain't Sally and Uncle Joe, we know they love the Lord, and I, I want to join, and I want to have what they have because they truly believe in the Lord and Jesus Christ. And um, this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he came out of the deal. A couple more points and then I'm done. So we know that Jesus is everywhere at the same time because he is omnipresent. You've got to, to believe that. And faith in Christ
July 17, 2022. The word says, our adult and youth adult topic, bringing the light. Our youth topic, topic is drawn out of darkness and into the light. Our children topic is saved. The devotional reading is John 5, 31 through 40. Our printed passage for all ages is John 12, 44 through 50. If you would like to give, you can, you can go through Givelify and Give. You can drop your gift off at the church at 6300 Hartford Avenue in Detroit, Michigan, 4210. Or you can use the drop down on Givelify. And you can look for our new Ebenezer and hit the give button. At the end of um, this, then we'll have our morning worship, which is at 10 a.m. Can we bow our heads for prayer? Father God, we come to you this morning, Lord Jesus, Christ, thanking you, Lord. Lord, thanking you for life, Lord Jesus. Thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning, Lord Jesus. Now, Father God, as we progress through the day, Lord, we ask that you just fall fresh on each and every last yes. one of us. We ask that you cover us, Lord. Cover our pastor, our church family, Lord Jesus. We ask these things in your name, Father. Amen. Amen.